Hey guys, Stephen here from Heresy Academy. In this video, I want to show you how to set up a checkpoint. Uh, I'm going to set up a checkpoint which is pretty much a pointless checkpoint really, since I'm just going to move for like a second and then I'm going to score a checkpoint. But it's just teaching you the function of how to do it, um, so then you can place out from, uh, checkpoints wherever you want them to be. So what I'm going to do in my prefabs folder, I'm going to grab the enemy and put it into the prefabs there. Just so you know, I like the enemy as it is. If it's set up, then I'm going to delete it because I don't want to keep dying. So, what I want to do is get my get my spawn point here, and it's nothing at all. It's it's just an empty object. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate it and just drag it out so it's like somewhere in the middle, about there, and then. Uh, I'm going to give a little script to my spawn points here. Uh, we have to make the script first, of course. And I'm going to call it checkpoint. And what it's going to do basically, uh, it's going to access the level manager script. And inside the level manager, we're going to set up a bool and I'm going to call it checkpoint. Um, I'm going to do a trigger uh, on trigger enter 2D. So I'm going to set this up for both spawn points. Um, so I should have made it prefab before I did it, but never mind. Then once you trigger with it, you're going to basically get the get the spawn point from the level manager, and you're going to change it to what you've just um, what you just collided with. So I've dragged my spawn point. I said not really. Want, well, let's add a circle collider to it. Doesn't have to be a circle collider. It just let's see if I can zoom in and just edit that collider there. Mm -hmm. To be fair, it actually looks alright. I mean, you can make it. As big as you want, or pretty much as small as you want. What you could do, to be fair, yeah, I might do that. I'm just going to save it. I'm going to drag in a couple of assets. So open up a sprites folder. All I'm going to drag in. I'm just going to drag in some flags. No, no. First, I'll just copy them back because I moved them. I don't want to move them. I'm going to drag these into my sprites folder. I've got a sprite sheet and then just a PNG version, which is a yellow flag. What I'll do is I'll have it set the, uh, the spawn points position there, but I'll also put in a flag just so you know it looks nice. So I'm not going to use the sprite sheet. I'm just going to drag this. Yeah, it's 1000 by 248. Still, it's one of them ridiculous size ones. The joys of Photoshop people. Not all of them are bad, don't get me wrong, some are decent, but this is the size that you're working with. They expect you to put this into a game like it's. Yeah, never mind. 1000 pixels per unit, so let's just try 1000 with this one, it may be too much. Never know. I mean, this one thing I'll point out, I probably pointed out before, if you're getting someone to do artwork and they give you a flag at 1000 by 2000 in size, Send it back and ask them for a smaller one. I mean, that's not too bad. I'd probably make it a bit smaller. But it doesn't really matter. Um, put it there. Put the spawn point there. I'm going to drag it in. It doesn't matter which way I drag it in, really. I can drag it under there. Circle Collider is happy like that. And I'm just going to copy that component and go here. And I'm just going to paste the component as a new one. So it's got the same Circle Collider. And then I'm going to drag the spawn point into my prefabs folder here. I'm not doing it to the first one because I don't want to flag there. So I'll just drag that under there. So now any changes I make in here will change it, like will change them all. So I can drag another one out and put it to there, sort of thing if I wanted. I mean, I don't particularly want to, but I could do just for this example. Example, not example. And now this is where I'm going to make a script. So drop myself into the scripts folder. Create a C sharp script. I'll just call it checkpoint. Not very imaginative, but it does its job. Checkpoint one word. Is checkpoint one word? If you guys, I don't know. I I think of silly things. I'm sure it's one word. Checkpoint. I've always written it like that. I just thought maybe we should put a capital P or something, and it's one word. We shall see. And more develop is ready. No. <laughs> And of course, Mono Develop decides to crash because that's what we do. 
when there was a checking for a solution to the problem, well, there clearly isn't one. So you might as well just like get a grip, do one, you know, and open it again. May stop the recording if it messes up now. But yeah, so like I said, we're gonna set it up now. So you access the level manager script and set up that collider. So you can see uh, adding that circle collider. Uh, you can check the name. Pardon me. Make sure it's the player. Um, and then you're gonna change the current spawn point to this one and to that one. So whilst we're waiting for model belt, we'll just put this down a bit so it's behind, so it's not floating. And then I just sort of use two, just sort of give you a bit of visual reference and checkpoint script there. Click open again, see if it works. Um, and then we'll go to level manager, and like I said, we'll set up a bool. It'll be just call it checkpoint, I suppose, or, or reach point, reach checkpoint. Uh, call it whatever you want. Just make sure you reference the right name because you're going to use level manager dot bool name and you set that to true every time you collide. And every time you collide with it, then you'll uh, you'll set the what's it called? Well, in the respawn, you'll set the player position to that current position. And now we're open. Great. So like I said, I want to get a public level manager, like we've done a few times now. On public level manager, this is the name of our level manager script. So if yours is something different, be sure to reference that. Just to make that a little bit more clear. I'll close that. So the script that we put all this stuff in, when we set up the, the spawn points, the player, rigid body, the death particles, our respawn script, whatever you call this, is this name here okay not this one the, uh, the orange one here this is the name of the script so if it comes up red make sure you've got the right name um, in the start function I'm just gonna make sure it, it finds itself so we'll do uh, level manager equals and find object of type and then the type is level manager Make sure you select public class, the one with the capital letter now in there, in here. Ooh. Open, close, brackets, premises. And this is what we've done in a few scripts, uh, like this one. Basically, it's the, it's the exact same line as this. And all we do is, every time we start the script, it finds its level manager. You can manually, man, uh, manually just pull the level manager in and get rid of this line if you wanted. It's completely up to you. So, you're not using update. Um, Put just outside update now. I'm gonna do void on trigger enter 2D and then inside here we're gonna just go collider 2D and then we'll just call this other open and close curly brackets inside here. You want to check if other dot name is equal equal two equal signs. I made that mistake on one of the videos. And then we call it player capital P. Close it off. Open curly brackets inside there. So if the other the other is the thing or the collider 2D that has collided or triggered our collider on our checkpoint, if it is, get your level manager. Uh, we said spawn point. Yeah, got spawn point equals a game object. This is going to equal the game object this is attached to. Okay. And I'm gonna go level manager. Oh, I didn't do it. Uh, what should we call it? What should we call it? This is this is our bool. I forgot to make the bool. Um, just call it checkpoint, so we know. So equals checkpoint. Uh, dot checkpoint equals true. It's gonna be red because I've not set it. So save that. Move over here, and just go down here and make yourself a public bool checkpoint. So now save that and this should turn to cut. Yeah, there we go. So it's gone right. <clears throat> so inside here, um, is that a respawn here? No. Let me just think now. So the player dot position equals spawn point dot position. So You know, because inside our respawn, we do all this stuff. So we'll spawn point dot position to so player dot position equals spawn point dot position. There, I just want to make sure now 
that this works. Um, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, it works. Okay, so make sure you save them scripts. And we'll click on this. We'll test it out because I'm not sure if we need to do something else. So let's, it's compiled. I'm just going to click on play. Oh. Uh, dear me. Checkpoint 21. I think we need to do something else. So checkpoint 21. Spawn point. Uh, equals game object. Oh. What have I done now? Uh, level manager. All oh, right. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. I've used transform rather than game objects. That's okay. Um. So what I'm going to do there. So the game object. So the game object is right and then dot transform dot. Well, will dot transform do? Because you're converting it to a transform. You don't really want to do the position, do you? Or oh, is it going to change the scale? I may be wrong again. I may want to put dot transform dot position. Just checking now. No, it accepts that. Okay, so before I click play, I'm just going to explain what I did. Um, level manager dot spawn point. I forgot. Uh, my spawn point is referenced here as a public transform. Now, if you're referencing something and you want to say this spawn point is now equal to the player rig, then you won't do a trans you won't do a transform equal to the rigid body. It won't just manipulate the object to be what you say it is. So, since this is a transform and this is a game object, what you want to do is make sure it equals the game object dot transform. So. Because uh, you may notice we say dot transform dot position or dot rotation stuff like that. Uh, so we're accessing the transform component here of the game object, which contains information for rotations, positions, scales. I may need to put dot position if it goes funky, um, but we'll test that out now. We we'll click on play. Do, 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 do. So I got myself a coin. Jump in, and of course, um, I have forgotten something. Click on play. I'm going to put canvas back on just so it looks pretty. I like it. Um, go down to my spawn point here. Well, actually, actually, inside my prefabs, spawn point there. Set is trigger there, otherwise, you'll see you just collide with it. And this spawn point set is trigger as well. And then maybe perhaps consider putting our spawn point script onto our spawn point object, uh, which is our checkpoint there. So then if you open up spawn point one there, yep, and then spawn point two, it's got a checkpoint. Make sure the first spawn point, if you want to say this is a spawn point as well, or if this is just your initial spawn point, make sure you decide. If this is just your initial spawn point and you don't ever want to spawn here again after you've hit a checkpoint, then don't do don't even do a collider, don't do anything. Um, but just for this, just to show you that it works, we're going to set this as a checkpoint as well, so you can hit that one, and then you've got no way of dying without hitting that one. But you know, okay, so that's that's a pointless one really, I suppose. But I've got no way of really showing you how. Uh, where is it now? Is it level manager? Spawn point to transform. Okay, I'll try and do it this way. So we're going to click on play. Right, so I started the game, and the first spawn point is this one, okay, which is this one here. So I'm going to move along now and I'm going to jump onto this. Whee! So I should have hit this. I should have hit the spawn point, and it should register. So go to level manager. See it's changed there to spawn point one. Click it, which is this one. So it's telling you it's now this one. So if I was to die, which can't, I can't manage to die without touching either spawn point. So I've gone here now. Spawn point number two. Click on the level manager. Spawn point number two, which is this one. You see now. So now if I was to just drop off and die, I'll just spawn back here. Yay. Yay. So let's hit that again. See if I can jump over it. No, I still hit that one. But yeah, so that's how you set up spawn points. And now, 
like I said, obviously, you don't want to put like a million and one spawn points. And that's how you do it to basically resemble an object. Because at the moment in the game, you can see the spawn points, but that's because I've got gizmos turned on. For now, inside my game, you have no idea. Oh, I can't change that now, can I? Okay. You've got no idea that this, this is any other object but a flag. Now, in all fairness, you could do everything and attach it all just to the flag. You don't even need the empty object. But I'm doing it as the empty object just to sort of show you guys specifically what the spawn point is. Sort of thing. So you can technically miss this one if you can just jump over it. That would, that would have been a better example. So. Yeah. You can double jump it, double jump it, and just jump off. You still spawn here. Whereas if you hit this one, jump over, you spawn here, then spawn. Ah, I did it, didn't I? Yep. Watch this now. The player is just decreasing because I'd missed the box collider. But yeah. So that's it for this video. Um, I hope you like it. Give it a thumbs up. Drop me some comments how you think like the series is going. Let me know what you want to learn next. Um, I'm probably going to work on doing the shooting, extending the level a bit more, um, have the camera follow it, follow the player, turning off the physics. I want to set up some, uh, some higher platforms as well, so you've got to jump up to them, because I have a theory that the physics isn't working right. Oh, well, it is. It's doing its physics job. Um, but it's just some default settings that that may want to be changed. But, yeah. So, there's, I've still got plenty to do myself. Like, things I can think off the top of my head. Um, I'm hoping to do, I don't know, quite, quite a few videos on this series. Try and cover every aspect you need. And if I leave anything out, if there's anything you're not sure of, drop me a comment and I'll make it happen. And subscribe to me. I was going to say subscribe to my videos you know you can do that too if you want but subscribe to me so that you can see the new videos uh, if you can't think of something and you think yeah maybe this is everything I need and then you're building a game and you think oh no if you subscribe to me and you jump back to my channel maybe someone else has already asked that same thing that you've just thought of and maybe you're watching it now maybe you want to know how to do checkpoints one main thing I want to do is I also want to do how to save the game and load the game it's it's not the most easiest thing, but it's also not the most complicated. There are assets on the Unity Asset Store. Um, I think one is actually called Easy Save, and someone sells it for like thirty dollars. It's properly taking advantage of the difficulty people have with saving the game, and you know if you get that asset, you've still got to set it up. You've still got a decent bit of work and some scripting to do. It's to do with file format, so. I want to try and do maybe do an entire series based on the different ways of saving and stuff for free, not having to uh, buy people's thirty dollar assets. I mean, I know people have got to make a living, but sell it for five dollars or, or one dollar, and you're likely to get more money. Anyway, that's just politics. So I'll leave this with you now, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.